Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about control and coordination. The two systems are working together. Which are these two systems? Number one is a nervous system and another is endocrine system. How it works in unicellular organism? At first we will discuss about the introduction of control and coordination. Working together of various integrated body system in response to changes in the surrounding for the maintenance of body function is known as control and coordination. Students, the nervous system is present in animals and also in plants. Sorry, in plants there is another type of control and coordination. First of all, we will discuss about the nervous system in animals, how it works in animals. In animals, the nervous system and hormonal system plays an important role in control and coordination. In plants, Control and coordination is done by chemical substances called plant hormones or phytohormones because we know the nervous system is only present in animals not in plants. If we discuss in a unicellular organism because of the single cell and a minute structure these organisms does not show any systems. They lack all systems within the cells. Even they carry all vital activities by their single cell. If we go another phylum like Porifera, Porifera is the lower organism. It is the first phylum of non-chordates. How the nervous system present in such organisms? The member of Porifera shows cell aggregate body plan. They lack nervous system, here the nervous system is totally absent. If we go the another phylum, the phylum is Nidaria. In the member of Nidarians are showing simple nervous system. It consists sensory cells and nerve cells. They connected by synapse and form nerve net in body. You can see here the nerve cells are formed in the body. It forms a network like and distributed throughout the body. Here the tentacles also shows nerve net and here the body also shows nerve net. Mostly the sensory cells are present in these organisms and they carry impulses from nerve to nerve by synapse. If we study the next phylum like a platyhelminthes, the member of platyhelminthes show a central nervous system, the primitive nervous system present in these organisms. Here example is of planaria. It shows a central nervous system from anterior side to the last, last part of the organism. Here at the anterior side of the head it shows a brain. A U-shaped brain is present at the ventral side of the body. And here the ladder-like manner nerve cords are present in the body of planaria. So we can say the primitive central nervous system shows in the phylum platyhelminthes and here the example is planaria. Here neural tissue within the nervous system the neurons or nerve cells are important part of the central nervous system 
so the structure of nerve cell is here you can see here it shows three parts the cell body the branches of the cell body are dendrites a long filament like part that is axon which is surrounded by myelin sheath this myelin sheath is protective in nature also it helps to transmit the impulses now we will discuss about the nerve cells here the two types of nerve cells are present neurons or nerve cells another are neuroglia or it is also called a glial cells the nerve may be sensory motor or mixed type nerve cells the function of nerve cells so these are the structural and functional units of nervous system each neuron consists three parts cyton or cell body dendron and axon function is it is involved in receiving information about environment around us generating responses to that information these cells are motor and these cells are sensory receiving information is done by sensory cells generating responses is done by motor cells now we will dis discuss about types of neuroglia neuroglia these are glial cells six types of neuroglia are present in our cns and in a pns out of these six cells four cells are present in our brain remaining two cells are present in pns it means peripheral nervous system now we will discuss about ependymal cells ependymal cells mostly these are lining the ventricles of brain these are made up of squamous epithelial cells or columnar epithelial cells production of csf is its function now oligodendrocytes these cells are numerous in white matter of brain it transmit or transmission of electric impulses in cns now the next cell is astrocytes the function of astrocytes these cells support and repair of damages also its function is blood brain barrier these cells are mix blood brain barrier if the pathogens are enters into the brain that time these cells are play important role like a barrier now the microglia it is macrophages the process is phagocytosis these cells are phagocytosis in nature they engulf bacteria or pathogens and destroy it it protects to our cns so these are the functions functions of these four cells now we will discuss about the satellite cells which present in peripheral nervous system satellite cells are protective in nature they support the function of neurons here the swan cells these are the most abundant glial cells they produce myelin sheath around medullated nerves of pns so basically these all types of cells are supporting in nature they nourishes 
to our brain also in a peripheral nervous system so these are the types of neuroglia thank you